Hey everybody, welcome back to DIY Hi-Fi. Today we're doing something very special. We're building the world's cheapest 21 inch subwoofer powered by the Fozzy 2.1 desktop amplifier. We'll be using DATS V3 to measure TS parameters and WinISD to model the response in our enclosure. This enclosure comes from an abandoned car audio project from a couple years ago. It was built to house an 18 inch driver, but I later modified it to accommodate a 21 inch driver. We'll get into the exact volume and tuning in just a bit, but first let's get this ratty old carpet off and see what kind of changes we can make to better suit this to a home setting. One of the first things we want to get rid of are these channels used to tuck the carpet. We'll be using a bed liner on this so it will look much better with the typical box style joints. To do this, I'll fill the empty channel with glue and MDF dust. This will help strengthen the weak spot created by the channel. After our glue mixture has dried, we can now come back with our router and a flush trim bit. This will trim away the unneeded paneling, leaving us with a flat butt style joint. This enclosure was built using glue and screws. This is done in car audio to provide better strength as it will likely take much more abuse from driving around with it. As a result, we see one of the screws has caused a split in the grain of the port wall. This is a simple fix, we'll glue and clamp this. It's now come time to remove the remaining contact cement and carpet. I'm going to use an orbital sander and very low grit paper. With an hour or so of patience, we're now ready to fill our countersunk screw holes. I'll use plastic wood to fill them in. Okay, so let's let our filler dry while we talk about the driver we're using. So this is in fact the cheapest 21 inch subwoofer available in the United States that I can find. It's the PSS 555 by Dayton Audio. It's currently available on Parts Express for $275. This is a pro driver, meaning it's designed to be used in PA and concert applications. PA drivers are typically very high sensitivity. High sensitivity is great for us because it means we'll need very little power to make a lot of bass. One of their biggest complaints of PA drivers is their limited excursion capability. But in this case, we'll still get 22 millimeters of X-Max. Let's compare the efficiency of this driver to something like the Ultimax 18. The PSS 555 is 96.3 decibels, while the Ultimax is 89.5 decibels. That's a large difference. Now the Ultimax is a great driver and I've built with it recently, so be sure to check out that video if you're wanting to explore all of your options. All right, back to the build. So this port wall is very large. As a result, it's very resonant. To help with this, I'll add a small brace midway in the vent and paint it black to match. At this point, our filler is dry, so we can now do a final sanding with a higher grit paper. Lastly, I'm going to give our corners a 45 degree bevel by hand with a sanding block. This will help to prevent damaged corners in the future, which is very likely with an enclosure this heavy.
We're now ready to move on to primer. This will help to seal the MDF for the long term and give our final finish a good surface to adhere to. While our primer is drying, we can work on our damping. Damping is crucial to a large enclosure like this. It will help to reduce standing waves in our cabinet. I'm using a mattress topper here to line the walls. You could also add a bit of polyfill loosely for good measure. While we're on the subject, let's talk about our enclosure tuning. To know that this driver will work well in this enclosure, we need some data. We can use the DATS V3 to take impedance measurements. This will give us the exact parameters of the driver. We can then use these to model the predicted response of the system using WinISD. Our enclosure is right around 7 cubic feet with a tuning frequency of around 29 hertz. This software can do quite a bit, but for this purpose we'll look at the transfer function, which shows an F3 of around 38 hertz. If we look at cone excursion, we can see that with the power we expect from the FOSI amp, we're well below Xmax. So let's talk about the amp that we're using. This is the Fozzy BT30D. It's a 2.1 amplifier. This means it has two powered stereo channels and one powered subwoofer channel with variable crossover. They unfortunately don't give exact impedance ratings, but it's safe to assume that they're using a 4 ohm rating. With an 8 ohm driver, this means we'll likely never see more than around 50 watts. This is plenty of power to get loud. This will also be powering our audience 212s on the main channels. So let's go ahead and start with the final finishing touches. I'm using a tan Duraback bed liner for this. This is a perfect option for those without spraying equipment or the space to do finishing work. It rolls on pretty easy once it's been well mixed. I'm not a huge user of these products, so I can't say how this compares to others, but it worked great here. It did take several days to off gas, so keep that in mind if you decide to use it. Lastly, I'll touch up the black paint in our vent So this is going to jump around the room without some kind of footing. It's a bit too heavy for rubber feet in my opinion. It will be going on wooden floors, so using felt feet instead will still help with isolation, but will also allow it to be scooted much easier. I'm going to chop up some scrap wood, glue it, and cover it with wool cloth. I'll use a dark color to make sure they stay hidden.
We'll apply gasketing to our terminal opening as well as our driver. It's very important to seal every area in a vented enclosure. It is a common misconception that vented enclosures don't suffer from leakage problems, but they do. Pressure levels in vented enclosures can often exceed those in sealed in certain cases. I also added a bit more bracing last minute as I just wasn't happy with what we already had in such a large enclosure. To mount the driver, I'm using quarter inch coarse lags with washers. We have a double front baffle, which gives us plenty of material to bite into. For aesthetic reasons, I've painted the washers and screw heads black to match. We'll use the DATS once more to verify the tuning frequency of our enclosure. As we can see, it lines up nicely with what we expected. So at this point, I'll give some final thoughts and impressions. I'll just start by saying that I'm still astonished at the output of this thing on such little power. It really is hard to believe. The Fozzy provides more than enough power to the subwoofer to keep up with the very efficient 212s. To have the entire system running on an amp that can fit in my pocket is really remarkable. I hope this video sheds light on what can be done with high efficiency drivers. The variable crossover on the Fozzy makes blending it with the 212s really easy. I'm used to moderately high end amplification like Emotiva separates and I really can't hear a difference with the Fozzy. It's also important to mention that I'm running Bluetooth out of the TV into it with almost no latency. I really can't say enough good things about it. There is also a pro model of the amp that provides even more power if needed. This 2.1 setup really is a great match. It provides more than enough SPL for dynamics with movies and music. I primarily use this system for YouTube and music and I cannot currently see any reason to ever upgrade equipment. The Dayton subwoofer plays deep enough to hear all the sub detail in movies and music. I have not needed to turn the bass channel up past halfway, so there's a lot more room for output if you like a bass heavy system. All of the parts in this video were purchased by me. I was not sent anything or paid to say a single thing about these products. Thank you so much for watching to the end. If you like DIY Hi-Fi, consider subscribing, that is all we do on this channel. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button as it really helps spread the video. Leave a comment and tell me what you think of the bedliner look. I'll see you guys in the next project. Thanks and bye.